New at 7, a story which is being watched around the world. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson is now in intensive care after his COVID-19 symptoms worsened. Back home, there is another clear indication the 24-hour lockdown will be extended. More people are convicted for breaching curfew restrictions. And a man in serious condition in hospital following vehicular crash on the All Saints Road. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening news here on ABS on this Monday. Antigua's News Authority, my name is Garfield Burford. And I am Terry Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin with a story on the international scene on this Monday night. Another headline from the global coronavirus pandemic. United Kingdom Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been moved to the intensive care in hospital after his coronavirus symptoms worsened today. That's right, Terry. A Downing Street spokesman said he was moved on the advice of his medical team and was receiving, quote, excellent care, end quote. Mr. Johnson has asked... Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab to deputize, quote, where necessary. The Queen has been kept informed about Mr. Johnson's health by number 10, according to Buckingham Palace. We'll certainly be keeping across this story. We will have much more on this fast-moving development during our international segment later in this newscast. But uh, just keeping you up to date on a major developing story internationally about the global per, uh, coronavirus pandemic. All right, to Terry, back home now, let's tell our viewers that another clear indication this evening, the 24-hour lockdown will be extended beyond the 9th of April. Prime Minister Arnold Gaston Brown provided that update during an interview on Antigua Barbuda today. We have to monitor very closely the amount of COVID infection. We do not believe we have reached our peak infections as yet, and clearly we have to continue to curtail the movement of people to ensure that the social distancing uh, policy is followed and we want to encourage people to continue the personal hygiene um, etiquette as well that have been, um, uh, has been established. Well, the Prime Minister says the nation will be informed about the length of the extension by Wednesday of this week. What we're seeking to do here now is to establish a new norm of doing a limited amount of business um, to allow people to shop for food, medicine, gas, and so on, but however, to do so in a very sociable, socially responsible manner to ensure that we practice social distance. We're encouraging the use of masks as well, so not only to protect your personal space of six feet, not to allow anyone to come within six feet of your personal space, but also to use masks. All right, uh, let's tell about this developing story now. Two men will wake up in prison tomorrow morning after being convicted for breaching the 24-hour curfew now in effect. Addis Joseph and Kadeem Morrissey were each sentenced to six months in prison after admitting to the breach in St. John's Magistrate's Court on Monday. The men are both unemployed, provided no reasons for flouting the regulations that have been put in place to curtail the spread of COVID-19. Meanwhile, Josh Mathias, Juan Luby, Blaben Rodriguez and Randy Davis have been fined $5,000 forthwith or will each spend six months in prison for the same offense of breaching curfew restrictions. Chief Magistrate Joan Walsh was not pleased with the explanations given by each of those men. One man claimed he was taking medication for his daughter but had no medication to show. Another says he was going for food by his brother and one man ventured out after getting a call to fix a tire for $150. Now, three others were charged for similar offenses and were convicted, reprimanded, and discharged after providing explanations deemed reasonable by the chief magistrate. Meanwhile, Police Commissioner Atlee Rodney says the police uh, or the public should not forget the reason measures such as a 24-hour curfew have been put in place. 
The top cop says so far, most people have been cooperating with law enforcers. However, a few have been arrested for flouting the rules, as we mentioned earlier, that have been put in place to prevent the spread of the coronavirus disease. Let's hear from the commissioner. We cannot lose sight of the seriousness of the virus and the damage that's been doing in other countries. That is what we have to keep at the forefront of our minds. Mm -hmm. It is not about just a curfew and restriction of your movement and some of your fundamental rights has been suspended. It is a deadly disease that is going around. The police commissioner was speaking with us on AB Today. He says he knows how deadly COVID-19 is since he has already lost a family member to the disease. I was told yesterday one of my relatives in England has passed away from that disease. So I know personally what it is. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing what is happening and we just have to take the precautions. Mm -hmm. And my appeal to the general public is to respect the directive that has been given. This is life-threatening and we can play our part. And that's our message from law enforcement. Meanwhile, the top cop says his officers have been provided with personal protective equipment, or PPE, to carry out their duties. As officers enforce the 24-hour curfew and other COVID-19 regulations, they must sometimes come in close contact with members of the public who are potential carriers of COVID-19. There are more that we need, and we are expecting some more. And we are very much appreciative of what we have so far and even what we will be getting, because... We recognize being at the front, we have to take certain precautions, and we continue to encourage our men and women on the street to take those precautions. Now the commissioner says the police force will acquire additional protective gear through an effort coordinated by the regional security system, the RSS. There are more that we need, and we are expecting some more, and we are very much appreciative of what we have so far and even what we will be getting, because... We recognize being at the front, we have to take certain precautions, and we continue to encourage our men and women on the street to take those precautions. All right, this story that we're tracking at this hour, literally coming just to hand. The authorities are looking for a 58-year-old woman who has gone missing from the Mount St. John's Medical Center, the MSJMC. A press statement from the MSJMC identifies her as Erica Fraser, but provided no further details. It, however, went as far as stating, however, and we quote, the risk to the patient increases the longer she is out of hospital, end quote. The MSJMC statement explains that the Criminal Investigation Department, CID, has already been notified and officers are actively searching for the woman. Anyone seeing or knowing the whereabouts of Erica Fraser is asked to call the Criminal Investigations Department at 462-3913 or 3914. The MSJMC acknowledges that the country is under curfew measures, but is appealing to everyone to support the efforts of the authorities and her loved ones in locating her. So once again, the authorities looking for a 58-year-old woman who has gone missing from the Mount St. John's Medical Center. Erica Fraser is her name. If you've seen her, please call the authorities. Well, Police Commissioner Atlee Rodney is expressing appreciation for a gesture, saluting those on the front lines in the fight against the novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19. Here's more from Jamie J. Roche. Vehicle horns break the silence in neighborhoods across the country 6 p.m. Sunday. A show of support and solidarity for those on the front lines fighting the spread of COVID-19, including healthcare workers and the armed forces. I just want to say to the general public, especially to the persons who initiated that not some, you know, thanks very much for recognizing the hard work that the frontline workers have been doing. Police Commissioner Atlee Rodney says he's encouraged. I know the, the health care providers have been going way above beyond and the law enforcement agencies have been right there doing their part. So we want to say thanks for that recognition and we will continue to be motivated as we continue to play our part in this pandemic. Incidentally, the organizers of the Horn Salute sought police permission before going ahead with the gesture. This was crucial because, strictly speaking, under the Emergency Powers Act, it is unlawful for any person to beat any drum or blow or use any noisy instrument during a period of emergency. Of course, in this case, the police high command utilized its discretionary powers to make the exception. Jimmy J. Roche, ABS News.
In another story, there is another strong recommendation for members of the public to use masks in an effort to spread to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. It comes from the National Office of Disaster Services, NODS, which says you should ensure your hands are clean when putting on the mask and you should cover your nose and mouth with the mask. You should also avoid touching the mask when wearing it. When taking off the mask, you should again wash your hands, uh, remove the straps of the mask, place the mask in a tissue, and then dispose of it in a bin. After discarding the mask, uh, hands should be washed again with soap and water or cleaned uh, with an alcohol-based hand rub. Nods also urges you to replace the mask if it becomes damp while being worn, while single-use masks should not be reused. It is strongly advised that masks sh should be worn when going outside and also at home while still practicing social distancing. Those without a mask or who cannot acquire one may use a clean piece, piece of cloth ma cotton material and bandana or handkerchief. Uh, those, uh, these should be washed regularly and ironed. Let's tell you about this on the Caribbean Development Bank. The CDB has just made available 140 million US dollars to its borrowing member countries or BMCs, including Antigua and Barbuda. The funds are to be used to tackle the fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic and other shocks to the e economies of the, of the region. Now, the bank in a statement on the weekend projects that at least 1 to 2 percent could be shaved off previous estimates of global growth as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. It says the picture is even darker for the Caribbean region. CDB President Dr. William Warren Smith says the intention is to provide access to appropriate financing during the pandemic to the Caribbean. So the institution in response to the crisis will be increasing the limit on its policy-based loans. These are loans designed to respond to exogenous shocks and support economic growth and poverty reduction. During this 24-hour curfew, Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown's green thumb is inspiring a nation and that every household can help uh, to achieve greater food security. ABS's Andy Lybird reports on how the Prime Minister is practicing what he preaches. Prime Minister Brown is apparently turning in his office suit for a pair of overalls and a farm hat. His backyard garden is now flourishing into a useful and productive enterprise that he proudly boasts is helping to provide meals for his family's dinner table. Such is his enthusiasm that he even prefers to be called Farmer Brown these days. His small plot at his home is filled with a variety of produce, including tomatoes, sweet peppers, cyan and thyme, okras, and squash. So the whole idea is to utilize the space effectively and efficiently to produce food. But it goes well beyond a simple pastime for the Prime Minister. There are broad ideals to his passion for seeing his efforts bear fruit. He's encouraging residents to do the same, since the food security of the nation is so important. I believe that uh, food security should begin at home and that we all have a responsibility to ensure national food security, to ensure that we can meet the domestic demand for our families and certainly for the overall domestic population. Now, as countries around the world face adversity as a result of the global pandemic, Prime Minister Brown is encouraged by the increased interest in the agriculture sector as people begin to rethink their priorities. But out of the crisis is coming some, uh, let's say, increased interest in, um, in agriculture, and that is certainly one of the opportunities that we are exploiting as a result of this COVID crisis. Prime Minister Brown, or should I say Farmer Brown, says he was thinking of doing his planting in the sector even before the onset of the crisis. Andy Lybert reporting for ABS News. And it's from the farm to the table for the Prime Minister. He has been busy around the kitchen as well, preparing meals with his own produce. One of the dishes featured on the Prime Minister's Facebook page is fish from our waters, as well as vegetables and ground provision. He also showed a photograph of his preparations for lunch uh, for the family with all local ingredients, uh, with the exception of butter, salt, and pepper. Now, in the... Meanwhile, let's tell you about this because Prime Minister Brown believes there is still huge untapped potential in the agriculture sector and is calling on Antiguans and Barbadians to give local farmers their support. 
key farming and fishing as a business that they are entrepreneurs and that their importance obviously would have come to the fore and we need to give them the support not only verbally but to patronize them when they bring their produce we should be buying them um, local produce as a priority even if they may be a little more expensive than the imported ones now the head of government places a high level of importance on the work of the farming community not only for their role in helping to feed the nation so again, I you know see some opportunities there to be exploited, and I hope the entire population you know will follow, and that our farmers will become among the most important and respected business people on the island. Well, the St. John's Development Corporation says farmers will be allowed to operate from the public market complex and PDO building on Thursday, April 9, and Saturday, April 11 only. It is a move aimed at reducing congestion at the public market and encourage social distancing or in the wake of the spread of COVID-19. It is a joint effort among the St. John's Development Corporation, the Police Force and the Agricultural Extension Division. Farmers will be allowed access at both locations between 7 a.m. and midday on both days. The SJDC also installed hand washing facilities at PDO to encourage good hygiene hand washing practices. Additionally, the extension officer of the Ministry of Agriculture will communicate to the farmers in due course in respect of operations going forward during the course of the coronavirus pandemic. You know, across all these developing stories, of course, about the global coronavirus pandemic, COVID-19, of course, nationally, regionally, and internationally. You don't want to go away because so much more is still to come. More details, of course, on uh, Boris Johnson, the United Kingdom Prime Minister, who is now in intensive care after his symptoms worsened. Of course, he was diagnosed with COVID-19 uh, some days ago. But still to come in addition, Terry. A man in serious condition in hospital following vehicular crash. There is another caution from the police. I'll tell you about that one. Plus, BBC article brings more renown to Nyabingi Rastafari community in Antigua following premiere of Peter Pan film. The details, on the, of course, of these stories and more upcoming on air and online. Stay with us. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. Getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home. And making sure your business can keep going, even after an accident happens on site. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Hi, I'm Anderson Edgel. I've been a born-again Christian for over 20 years and involved in church all my life. So I know just how much we as Christians enjoy coming together for worship. However, there's a deadly new coronavirus among us, and we must change the way that we fellowship with each other in order to preserve the lives of the people we love and care so much about. New regulations have been put in place in every sector of our society to stop the spread of this deadly virus. As believers in God and the Bible, we're expected to comply with the laws of the land just like everyone else, and even more so. You know, the Apostle Paul was very clear about this in the book of Romans. In chapter 13, he says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. He further explains that these authorities exist for our own good. So let's heed the Apostle Paul's advice and respect and honor these new regulations that have been put in place to protect our children, our elders, our communities, our churches, and the nation as a whole from this deadly coronavirus. God bless you and stay safe. Stay with us for the latest on the coronavirus as we provide continuous updates and breaking news on ABS TV Channel 10 and ABS Radio 90.5 FM. You can also receive news alerts directly to your smartphone and tablet by downloading the ABS app. And make sure to connect with us on social media for exclusive news stories, photos, and videos. During the curfew, there's limited time available to stock off on essentials. Here's a list of items you may need to keep in stock. Dry goods. These will last a long time and are easy to throw in the pot and cook. Canned fruit and vegetables. While they may not taste as good as the fresh stuff, they do last longer. Don't forget water. 
you'll need at least eight glasses per day. Ensure you have enough soap, bathroom supplies, and feminine products. Check your baby supplies, such as formula, diapers, and other essentials. Try to have a first aid kit handy. And finally, be sure to maintain an adequate supply of any medication you're taking. Remember, there's no need to hoard supplies, especially when more vulnerable consumers, such as the elderly and those with compromised immune systems, may need these items. This is a public service announcement brought to you by ABS Television and Radio. Thank you so much for staying with us. Time now for us to continue with the national developments. And let's tell you about this one, a major developing one, because a man is nursing serious injuries after he was thrown from a vehicle following a crash on Old Saints Road just before midday on Monday. ABS's Jamie J. Roche was on the scene. One of the last scenes you expect to see on a day when a 24-hour curfew restricts most private vehicles from being on the road at this time. Firefighters wash blood and debris from the highway. A bright red X marks the spot where a Honda SUV crashed into this utility pole here on All Saints Road. Now, if you follow me here, you will see where it then crashed into this wall, creating massive damage. And you can see pieces of the vehicle littered alongside the highway. The vehicle driver is now in serious condition at the Mountain John Medical Center since he was actually thrown from the vehicle after the impact. He landed somewhere there in the middle of the road. Now, a female passenger who was also in the vehicle was not severely injured and she too has been taken to the Mountain John Medical Center for observation. In the meantime, the police are advising residents who go out to do their essential shopping between 7 a.m. and midday to ensure they manage their time properly so that there's no need to rush to get home on time. On All Saints Road, I am Jamie J. Roche reporting for ABS News. Thanks, Jimmy. And following the crash, Prime Minister Arnold Gaston Brown cautioned that empty roads is not a license for speeding. This warning was echoed by head of the Police Traffic Department, Assistant Superintendent Rodney Ellis, who is reminding drivers the speed limit is still in effect despite the state of emergency. He says all the traffic laws are being enforced and people will still be ticketed or charged for improper parking and other violations. In other news, ch child maintenance payments will once again be made available after an interruption last week. Chief Magistrate Joanne Walsh has advised disbursements of child maintenance receipts will be done from the Magistrate's Court on Wednesdays and Thursdays from this week between 10.30 a.m. and midday. Walsh is making it clear, however, only persons whose names have been previously registered will be eligible to receive payments and those collecting must have valid national identification. Now, the chief magistrate says she's pleased to advise this essential service will once again be available to beneficiaries in short order. Well, the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, has added to the international fame of Antigua's Yashua Mack, who recently starred as Peter Pan in the Ben Zeitlin-directed film Wendy. In a, report, in a report published yesterday, the story of how Yashua was found in the disciplined Rastafarian community of rural Antigua recounts how the recruitment of the now 10-year-old, the movie's filming and its subsequent premiering, have launched the small community into the spotlight. While well, Yashua's mother, Aziza Roberts, offers her version of what is currently happening. According to her, quote, it's given the world an opportunity to take a look at Rastafari from a different perspective. People can learn a lot from us about the simplicity of life, end quote. The report by BBC describes the village as rustic and unspoiled. Now, although the culture of the community has become more publicized and better understood, the article says the community, by and large, remains unchanged and autonomous. Well, it was Yashua's father who helped found the Naibingi order of the Rastafarian community in 1983, spread over more than 10 acres, uh, the older Mac, well, he posits, quote, everything we need for our health is here. Seawater, sunshine, herbs, and fresh fruits and vegetables. A circle of life, he adds, is central to their beliefs and culture. Fascinating indeed, isn't it, Terry? That, uh, of course, more international recognition yeah, and certainly. fame. Burnishing the brand, you could say. And uh, most, uh, most deservedly, that young man. Uh, you heard about the movie, and I mean, his performance was amazing. And from everyone that uh, were involved in this, uh, it's a good look for the young man.
Indeed. And, and the Nabingi community. Indeed, absolutely. And, and it's very good that, of course, uh, there, there was some recognition for the movie before uh, COVID-19 effect started to really shut down a lot of movie theaters. So uh, this came out earlier on. So there were millions of persons who would have had the opportunity to have seen the movie and also uh, of course, to have learned much more about Yashua Mack, the Nyabingi community, and of course, by extension, Antigua and Barbuda. So. All right, when we come back from the short break, Terry, we'll turn our attention to weather news. And of course, still to come, so much more about COVID-19. We'll go around the region. We call it our COVID-19 tracker. We'll look at all the territories around the region, how they have been doing in terms of COVID-19, the numbers the recoveries and the, and the deaths, unfortunately. We'll keep you across all of that. Plus, we'll also be live in Castries, St. Lucia. We'll get an update from that country as it will be relaxing some of the restrictions in the wake of COVID-19. So much more to come. But Terry, when we come back from this break, we'll hear from Leticia Humphreys with the weather report and forecast with us. Stay aware of the latest information.